Hello everyone, um, today I'm gonna be exploring Elmish. Um, Elmish is a um, Elm inspired um, web framework to develop uh, single web page apps um, for the web. Um, so it has the same um, model view update architecture of Elm. Um, so it implements this abstractly in uh, Elmish um, and then um, it needs the actual rendering engine um, which depends mostly on React and React Native. So you can actually write Elmish code and Elmish code is mainly um, written in F-sharp um, because it runs on Fable. Fable is the um, Fable is the the JavaS the F sharp to JavaScript kind of compiler uh, that like you can write code in F sharp and then it will compile or transpile to JavaScript. Um, so anyway, we will be exploring Elmish here and uh, um, checking out the examples and seeing if we can implement a to do list in Elmish. So let's let's start out here. Um, so I don't have anything, neither the environment nor nothing. So um, like I'll be starting from scratch. Uh, so supposedly there there should be a template um, through .NET Core. So I think we will be using this one, which it says here, the template will help you set up the minimal Elmish application to start a new project. This one is a demo app. Um, actually, we can start with this one to see how everything is structured. So th that's my first time to try Elmish actually. Uh, and I'm pretty new to F sharp, so I'll be searching stuff um, along the way too. So we can take this, I think. Yeah, um, like this. Uh, but we will need the demo here. That's the template. Okay, so how to use it here? We need to install the template first and I have .NET 2 point something. Um, so let's try out this. Um, sorry. So here it installed a bunch of requirements for the template, I guess. Um, I just installed the source or a template pack. So we installed the Elmish um, demo template probably. Or do we have to install this too? Maybe we have to do this too. in case so yeah I, I I see them here now okay cool so we should be starting with this um, here it says we are creating a project with the name awesome and the language F sharp um, Okay, let's let's see this and um, I think copy it probably. Okay. 
Okay, let's see also here. So, yeah, that's that's the Ionite plugin. Um, I think it built something in the project. Let's see here how the project is structured. So we have the packet. The packet is the F# -sharp package management um, library, VS Code, nothing here, packet files. And public is probably the static files of the app. Um, so I can make the font bigger. Um, the static files, so this is index.html, which is just having the, the main div that's the Elmish app and the JavaScript that has all the code that fills in um, the div. It's a pretty standard React kind of um, way to structure the application. And uh, we have all the other stuff like NuGet, um, the other package management, probably we need it anymore. And then the package, um, the JSON, which is the JavaScript packages that's, that, that are needed um, to run the single, the React mainly. So we have here dependencies, React, React DOM, and they're actually pretty old versions. We are now in 16.3 or something. Um, anyway, doesn't matter. Um, we are we are writing Elmish, so, so this shouldn't affect us in any way. Um, so here is the app. So how can we run this? Um, let's see here. So we have web pack diff server which I think we should be able to so npm install um, dot net restore and then dot net fable npm start we can't try this out So right now npm is installing the JavaScript packages that we need. And we have uh, an error here. Why is that? Oh, that's weird. Is my internet connection down? No. Yeah, so I guess SAS is having an issue as usual. Like SAS installations, they depend on native stuff um, and their packages are pretty unstable sometimes. So let's see the... Um, can we people and mesh react? I think we can just upgrade SAS and it should download properly. Let's search for the actual error here. Maybe it needs Python.
Yeah, probably I don't have any Python version installed. And SAS needs Python or something. Fine, let's let's install Python. So I'm not sure if it needs Python three point something or it has to be two point seven. Um, let's try to install the three point seven. Um, I need this to be the 64-bit version. So, here it is. Sorry about that. Um, if you have any questions, just post it in the chat. Um, cool, until it installs, let's check out the source. So it's, that's the, that seems the entry point of the app, um, which is make program here. And um, you supply it with the function in it, and update and root. And init is probably the initial um, state, the initial model. And update is the one that, that gets uh, called whenever we have an event. Um, yeah, I can do this. Let's see if this will improve anything. Uh, I guess let's see the error again it's checking for Python 2.7 so probably I'll have to install that um, that's that's really annoying but um, so I don't need 2.70 I need just 2.7 something um, Yeah, latest one at least. 15. The MSI installer. I guess if I upgrade it, SAS, it might work. Like here. But I'm afraid that might do like that might cause other conflicts with other packages. So I'm I'm not ready to do this right now. Um, I guess I don't have to add it to the path because it seems that the package checks directly in C Python 27 folder. So let's see that. Oh, 
okay that's that's different at least hopefully it will finish fine Oh my god. That's that's bad. That's really bad. Um And it's all because of not SAS. So I guess I guess I'll try this um, upgrade thing. Let's see the latest version. So four point eleven, which might work, hopefully. Hmm, it worked. That's nice. Uh, that would have been much easier than installing Python. But anyway, let's continue. Um, so yeah, um, I guess we need to see the in source, and then we need to install packet. Uh, dot net restore. Um, Okay, it just um, restores packages to the um, F-sharp project file and does something with NuGet. Then we can fable, tell Fable to, um, to start. Cool. So... It compiled successfully. Yay. Okay. Um, so that's that's the sample project we have. Uh, it's it's pretty decent actually. Um, so let's see the structure again. Yeah, we said um, so we have here this make program and make program is having um, like we can read the documentation here it's a typical program um, that's produced like new commands are produced by init update um, along with the new state so as we said update mostly takes the message um, and um, takes the model and emits a new model at the end, uh, which is the new state. And the uh, root is view root, which is probably the 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 root React element that we want to like show the whole app in uh, the view. The view root, which is here. We will check read the code here first. Um, later, I mean. So here we say program to navigate and to navigate is it seems like a navigator um, that jumps between pages here like this. Um, so we have multiple URLs we are jumping in between and um, we tell it to parse the hash. Um, we give it a page parser and we give it the function that actually updates the URL, I guess, here. Um, that's in state. Sorry about that. So, and here at the end we tell it. Um, so, so this is just the debugging part. If we want to debug, 
something I think in F sharp uh, Fable and then here we have with react and then we tell it the the ID of the element that we saw uh, in the index here the div that that will render the whole uh, react app in and then we tell it to run the actual program cool so let's let's see here so we have the root the root is having all the the whole view of the app which is um so we define first something called page html which is a function that accepts one parameter and it's either about or counter or home which are the three urls here uh, home counter and about and um, let's see the about for example which is the simplest because it just has text um, so we can control click here so this is the about um, it's in a file called view in a folder called info so all it has is the div element it has the array or the list of uh, uh, HTML attributes which is just a class name and then it, it has content as a class name and then it has all the children and the HTML tag um, I know this because I played with Elm before so I know the structure of Elm a little bit the structure of Elm is um, when you are writing DSL for the HTML um, so it's like all elements in HTML are just functions and these functions take two lists uh, one list is having the HTML attributes we need and the second list is having all the children um, inside this HTML element so we have an h1 which is the header uh, doesn't have any attributes and then it has a string um, child which is about page which is this one and uh, the p which is paragraph and it has a string um, child element which is this so let's go back here and see the other one so counter counter is having a root as well um, so here we divided the stuff by um, so we have info counter and home each is having a view and inside the view each is having a root a root in the view um, so each of these is a module and then the view is a module as well inside the counter module and then the root is just the function okay um, actually counter is a namespace sorry yeah counter is a namespace and view is a module inside it cool so um let's continue here counter is having the root um, the view and the root of the view here takes um did we have here parameters we didn't have any parameters for root root here but root here would have two parameters which is model and dispatch um so model is having the the model we are rendering and dispatch is the um, function that we dispatch any events on and it has the type of uh, message to unit so that's that's the event dispatcher so this is this is the model um type the model type which is just having an integer because counter is just tracking an integer and then the messages 
are having increment, decrement, and reset. Cool. So that's the model, and the model is basically um, this is um, the model type, which is having um, current page. Ah, this is the model for the whole app. So it just tracks the current page, which is um, the three types that we mentioned before, which are home, counter, and about. And it has the counter model inside it, which is just the integer. And then the home model, which is, the, we didn't check yet, but this is the one here, which is having a name. Um, to just say hello someone so that's the type of the um, counter model here cool and last thing that we supply to root is the dispatch and the dispatch is basically um, the message And we have a couple of types of our messages because we have different different messages across pages. So we have the counter message, which is increment, decrement, or reset. And we have the home message, which is having the, the string, um, the change string. And then we, we compose it with the dispatch function which just takes the message from here, that results from here and um, doesn't supply anything. It just triggers the, the update method, the update function. Cool, so this is counter. And let's explore what happens actually with counter. Um, so that's the whole app. This is the menu on, on the left, and uh, this is just the view of it. Um, it's used here. It's just to show the, the view, uh, including the label and the page and the current page. So anyway, um, we can try to add actually and learn more by adding stuff. Um, so I'm going to add a um, to-do uh, namespace here. So we have home, like let's, let's try to imitate counter. Um, so I'll be adding a new folder, call it to-do. And then we will have three files in there. Um, one of them is the state, which is having the model, and then the types, which will have all the types, and then the view, um, which will have subsequently the view. So let's start with the types. Um, so types, we will have um, message type, um, let's look at the types here. So we need to specify the module first, um, which is to do the types. And then we need to specify the type of the message, um, which we will say it's either a new to do uh, of string. or delete to do of um, ID maybe, which is an int. And then, or not an ID, it would be maybe an index, an index in the list. And then we will have um, mark. Uh, complete 
or um, let's say switch complete to switch um, if it's completed or not and then we will have the index as well of the to do item we need to modify so that's the message we need the actual type for the model And the actual type for the model will be just a list of to-dos. Um, so that's a list of to-dos, um, list of strings. Um, sorry. I'm not used to F sharp. Is that right? Right, right. I guess so. Yep, seems right. Um, and I'll make it a list. I know it's totally inefficient because lists uh, don't have constant random access but whatever now and that's it for the types i guess so let's see the state of counter um so let's close the types here this is the state of what now, this is the state of the whole app Never mind. Um, that's our state. Let's see state of the counter. So state here mainly includes the int, the init function, which is the initial state. And um, it needs the update function, which is um, the function that, that gets triggered with any events um, having the message that gets emitted from the event and uh, the old model and it should emit the new model that we need to render so let's just take this copy here and we can modify it so first thing is this is a to-do state we need to open emission types of course Why is it not defined? Okay, Elmesh is not defined, model is not defined, and CMD is not defined. Um, I don't know though. It's same thing. Maybe, maybe I need to like, let's write first what's happening and then we can see. So the initial model is an empty. So that's the model, that's the command message. Uh, it's a tuple of um, the model and the messages uh, if we need to trigger any events in the beginning, but we don't need any any events to be triggered. So that's an empty list. And then the model is just an empty list as well. Um, which is an empty list of strings, um, doesn't have anything. So in the update, we will be dealing with the messages. We have the types here. We can just take them all. Um, 
so these are the new types um, so a new to do is having the to do text which will be added to the list um, to our model and then delete to do would just filter um, the list that has can we filter by index Okay, we can say indexed. So we will be saying that our model would be indexed first, and then each each one would be um, filtered according to the index, which is um, so we will be having a tuple of the index and the to do. Um, we will be filtering anything that I um, so that's the index that I is um, not equal to index and then we will map it to get the first cool I think that should work I'm not so sure how should we format this in F sharp but yeah whatever maybe like this like L. Um, the last thing is switch to complete or not uh, and we don't track you know what let's let's just let's just solve stuff without having a complete now complete or incomplete it it will be just a list of to do's and that's it and let's see Let's see why um, this is not defined around here. I guess um, that might be related to the view. So let's see the view here. Let's just try to see if the view will throw any errors. Yep. So I'm trying to figure out why we're having these namespace errors. So for example, counter state, um,
that's the source file, right? Um, so this is normal, I'm sorry about the VS Code messages, this is regular, ah, it's probably this, okay, um, let's try out here. So that's the counter, we will copy it. As it is. And we will call it to do. And then we will have the to do states, types, and view. And let's see here. of course we need to stay state that types as pre before yeah so what i knew is f sharp cares a lot about the order files in this um f sharp project file um because like you cannot have anything that depends on something and then it comes before it so anything that comes later um uh, it's like um directed graph so anything that comes before anything um, cannot depend on anything that comes after it yeah so like this doesn't depend on anything because it has nothing before it um, that might depend on everything because um, it has everything before it so yeah anyway i guess that should solve our problem here where is it? That's view. Cool. Cool. So that's view for to do. Yeah. So we got rid of all the errors before here. Um, and state is working regularly now. So that's not the equal. It's the equal, uh, not equal and F sharp yeah this one and um, first doesn't match Ah, we need second actually, because the first is the... So indexed returns us the, the index first and then the actual to-do list, to-do item. Um, so we need to take the second, which is the to-do item itself. Cool. So we solve the state, let's solve you. Um, types isn't happy because we are still in count namespace so yeah that depends on the namespace we are in and we need to be in the to do namespace to get the correct types so anyway we need now to view stuff um, so i'll borrow i'll be borrowing things from the home view maybe because it has an input. So we probably need this one. Um, so that's the whole input part. But it's inside the P element called control, which I don't know if we will need this, but I think we don't need this. Let's try and see. So, um, we will be dealing with root. 
we would have the main div and the main div is kind of same maybe um, it will be having on top the input and um so that's the input here and the on on change is the event that happens and we need to be dispatching the message um which is um new to do but of course it wouldn't be so here here is on change i don't want it to be on change um i want it to be on uh, that's the best thing about f sharp um So on key press or key down, on key down. And um, we will get the event and then the event dot um, char code or key code, key code I think 13, which is the enter key. The best thing about F sharp is the, the autocomplete here. Key code is a float. I'm not sure if this is right, but let's see. So if key code is 13, So we need two events actually, um, one for filling the um, input and one for the enter key. Or you know what, you know what, like, never mind. So we need this to be um, type here to do item. Ah, we need to track, of course, the in the model. This thing. Where is our model here? So our model would be to do list. to do item the input box or whatever input maybe which is just a string and of course in F sharp we'll be doing this Actually, we don't need to do this at all. Um, so we need to modify the... Um, so in the messages here, it's not just new to do, it's a change of string as well. And then when we press something, we will, we will take all the 
all the input item, put it in the to-do list, and then we clear up the input item. So here we will be returning actually um, an empty list. And an empty input. And then we will have a different message. Plus um, text. And we will be returning the same model. What's the update? F sharp update record syntax. Mm. Uh, the record with such and such. Okay, so that would be the model with uh, input, change it into the text. Plus the events empty. Of course, here would be the model with um, to do list equals the model to do list. So here we are appending the to do text to the to do list prepending it actually and uh, here we will be dealing with the model the to do list and then that would be the Actually, we will need as well the input to be empty. So whenever we add a new to-do, we need to empty up the input for new other new to-dos. And here, giving me an error yeah I think the indentation here needs to be like this or something seems like an indentation thing Missing up the indentation, but let's try to fix it. It says here possible and correct indentation. This token is offside, offside of. Text starting acquisition. Try indenting this token further or using standard formatting convention, which is which I don't know. 
Um, can I do this? Maybe it seems it seems it's happier about this. Um, yeah, that seems fine until I know more formatting stuff. Cool. So right here we have on change and um, we need to emit the change string which was here. So that's the same code exactly like the home page. But right here it has an error. None of the types uh, even target string support the operator question mark. I don't know the operator question mark. So it gets the value of the oh, this is C sharp. Sorry. Why oh, did I write C sharp? Uh, it was weird when I saw the <laughs> the null in C sharp. So I have a guess here that all, all we are doing is so the, the idea of this code here is on the change of the input, um, we are triggering, we, we get the event, and the event we check the target, and if the target has a value, we just trigger change string, and um, like if this value is present, it continues, um, by triggering the event and if it's null or something or not there or I don't know an option and it's none what's the type here I need to know the type in the event Mm -hmm. It's an option, I guess. Thank you. 
So question mark is, it specifies an optional argument, use an operator of dynamic method and property calls. Um, I want to see an example of its usage. Okay, you can specify an optional parameter. Um, that's an optional parameter here. So they are somewhere known as a regular option type. So could be none, could be some three. I want to get the type of the event target. Let's see how it's working here. Um, So value is supposedly a string. Is there any documentation to Elmesh?
So here's the same example. I, w I wonder why is it not It actually compiled. Um, it compiled. Did it compile my files? Uh, it might not have compiled my files. Yeah, it didn't compile my files because I didn't include the actual to do list in the app. So. Let's see here. So in app, um, we need the other page type, which is um, um, so these are the messages, which is um, we'll have a to do message of to do types not message. Here we will have also the to do, which is to do types of model. That's the model of the to do list. I wonder what do we do with this? I wonder what do we do with it? I want to see what happens without this. Um, so we have the third page and then we will have to handle the to do Hmm, to kind of route the messages. Okay, I see now. Yeah, we didn't, this is not defined because it's not compiling, of course. And this is not, Thank you. 
and that's the types of the routing of course we don't have the type yet of the page so that's good um, here we didn't handle the This is for the URL update stuff. So whenever we change the URL, we init the model and the commands, which are Are the events here uh, we need to handle as well the actual So this the, the what I wrote now is the update the the state I updated the state methods for the whole app to um, to handle the to do messages and the to do models as well um, either in the initial state to initialize the um, to do state to the its initial uh, method and uh, and this is this is like this is how we handle components kind of like react um, but in the L model in L mesh here uh, and this is the update which kind of um, handles to the messages on the upper level um, yeah So we still have Why is the model a string here? Um, I'm wondering, like the model here should be the to-do model, which is including the input and the to-do list.
Hmm, because I'm I'm dealing with it with a default value that mod model. Um, it should be dot input. Yep. Suddenly now it's um, the actual model in the to do. Cool. We still have this error though, but let's see. Hmm. Yeah, it gave me the errors in. Uh, There is someone who wrote. Maybe I should write that exclamation. That's JavaScript. Um, I have an idea, but I don't want to try it now. Let's see. So I have Visual Studio. Maybe it can give me more type info about the operators um, just to understand what's happening there. Apparently, I didn't open the Visual Studio before. I rarely use it. I just installed it for the .NET Core and the other stuff that 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 I needed to install from um, for .NET for framework. Um, so. Can't I skip this? Come on. Okay.
to Vermin. Yeah, sorry if the text was small. Uh, apparently, I have fable the score open. Let's explore stuff here. Finally, um, so here it has the same effect as unbox dynamic casting erased in compile JS code. The casted type can be defined on the call site. It's like I'm dynamically getting the value inside the target, which is which is weird a bit, but I don't know why it's not working here. What if I remove all of this? Um, of course, because target is an event target. So we need the value. That's, that's pretty annoying to be stuck in such a in such a small thing. Uh, I'm trying to see any other examples of Elmesh being um, Uh, 
having an event like this one to see what's wrong. I, I, I guess I'm, I'm missing something up in the types. That's, that's mostly the problem. Like some, something in the types here isn't working nicely. Um, so that's a form event, that's an event target. Um, is it the same at home? That's an event target, that's a form event. It has autofocus. Maybe I need to import, huh? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm probably missing this one. That's right. That's that's the um, that's the problem here. That's the problem here. The fable. That's probably what supports the um, weird. Exactly dynamically access a property of an arbitrary object so so here here it seems like a target the event target and fable doesn't doesn't have access to all the properties inside um, react uh, synthetic event so it's it's it has implemented this which is just um, dynamic access for properties um, and and it just um, that's bad that's bad okay that's that's not so safe but yeah whatever okay um, so we access dynamically the value and then we kind of cast it I think to something else I mean do we even need the casting I guess so yeah, because it returns the type as a, as a polymorphic A type to object, and we need to somehow modify this through saying like this is like execute this in the JavaScript native. It's like this, this gets you the lazy value lazily, like it gives you a function that, that you have to trigger using this operator to actually give you the actual value. Um, yeah, it's unboxed, dynamic casting, erased and compiled JS code. Um, the caster type can be defined on the call site. Whatever. So hopefully everything compiles now. Yep. Let's see. Um, where's the to do? Ah, so actually we can do this. Nope. Nope. So we missed something in the app, probably. This info counter home and the nav bar. Yeah, the nav bar. Uh, nope. So these are the links on top here.
and then it just lays out the nav buttons yeah nav bar isn't something useful to us now let's see the app here so we have about ha huh, the menu list Oh, it refreshes automatically. That's great. Um, <laughs> when I press it, it just directs me back to the same page. That means that there's some place that's missing still. Um, so we have current page. That's the type of the page. The type of the page should have the to do URL. And we need the routing for this. So where is the routing? Yep, that one. Nope, that's not enough. Ah, it is. Yeah, of course we don't have any other events yet. Cool. So back to the view, we need to list the just takes the properties list which is empty and then we have another div that has the list of all the things we need which is um, ah, let's just map the models a div that has an empty and the string of t uh, that's the properties list sorry about that Can actually make it a UL and then we can make 
this the list item. There's an error here it says type A list is not compatible with type react element. Oh, because I'm putting it in a list inside the list, which is. Like that should be a list of its own. That's right. Um, is there something like this operator? Nope, this is not Haskell. But actually, I could have done this. Yeah, that looks cool. So we map the to-do list and to list items and the list items are inside the uh, UL. Uh, we don't have any button that triggers. Let's make this button. The action is add to do. No need to do. Let's dispatch. I need this to be in a separate div.
Yeah, whatever the CSS is. Rained, but hmm. uh, we should be seeing that the input gets emptied. And we actually empty it in the here when we trigger the new to do we we empty the input. Well it seems that the view doesn't render Yeah. The view doesn't render the like it, it just takes it as a default value, but the actual value isn't there. So yep that works great um i think that concludes it um yeah um I know we didn't do everything we, we, we needed to do, like we, we didn't make an actual to-do list. Um, but yeah, we got stuck in this um, weird thing in El Mesh, which I didn't know about before. Um, so uh, anyway, thank you everyone for um, watching this video. Um, hope you learned something new today and if not, hope you had fun at least. Um, thank you so much for watching and see you soon.